Hello, welcome to another Tonalist Landscape oil painting demonstration with your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy. And actually, this is the 200th painting that I have shared with you that is not a study. I keep track of these things. There's a little code. I told you this day was coming, and it is here. I made this video just a little bit longer. I don't like to go too long because, you know, I run out of things to talk about and you get bored. So, <laughs> anyway, um, it's a happy time. So, I did have a... I was going to try and do this earlier today. It's, uh, it's Thursday out here. It's uh, actually it's July 4th there in the U.S., July 5th out here. Uh, in New Zealand and um, I was going to try and do something and post something up earlier today or even even yesterday I wanted to but I thought nah the one I have slated is a redo which are you know awesome don't get me wrong but I wanted to make it original so also you can see this is one of the videos where I recorded my color mixing process and uh, you can always slow that down, uh, maybe even take a screenshot. Actually, you don't have to take a screenshot. All you have to do is go to my blog um, on my website and you will see uh, um, still photos of the paintings that I'm sharing here on YouTube. I assume most people are interacting with these videos on YouTube, although they're also in the blog, so a good shortcut uh, would be just to save a uh, a link to the blog and, um, and just go there where you're gonna have a, a still photo and a video and I used to write as well but that that got to be a real um, burden with the uh, having to do a video than having to write it just it meant that I was gonna do it a lot less and so my feeling was the best just to do the videos since uh, I can do this off the top of my head and um, you have the added benefit of if you're really not that into what I'm talking about you could just mute the sound and put on some tunes and just watch me do the painting uh, this painting is in my recent show and it's a good one to do for the 200th because uh, uh, first of all I sold it which is always great second of all it's all done in one color pass which is also great um, and this is a, a case where I decided, you know, I'm just going to do a blue sky and a green, you know. And uh, funny enough, you know, that would be <laughs> probably most people's default. But uh, I, I have probably done anything but uh, green land blue sky paintings. But uh, I've got a few slated actually I feel like doing also this is that 5 by 10 proportions which um, I've done a couple um, one last week and one this week uh, really strong little paintings uh, the, as far as format goes it really is awesome and maybe it's just the freshness of it uh, I, I've done uh, you know nothing but good paintings at this uh, with these proportions so far so we'll see if that trend continues it's uh, it's unlikely <laughs> it's just unlikely because uh, nobody does a good painting every time although I have to say I've been getting better and better and better doing a lot less stinkers and uh, when I do do stinkers I think oftentimes there's still saleable stinkers so uh, they maybe aren't approaching um, the best uh, stuff I could do but um, a lot of times they're still saleable so um, I was in the studio today um, got home a little early because uh, I thought well I get that I get that blog I get that I call it a blog it's a, v a video blog I guess I'll get that blog a blog post out I, I want to get that done um, mostly because I don't want to run in too close to the uh, past masters of which I'll be rolling out over the weekend. Uh, I think last weekend I had one run on top of the next, which is okay. It's better than getting not getting anything out. But uh, I've been um, kind of keen to share this painting and a few others that I still have. This was done back in May. 
and like I say, I, I put it up in my show, and all of these uh, were distinguished by the fact they were all done in one color pass, which, you know, I s sort of, uh, well, on one hand, I think it's great, but with the dark um, uh, underpainting, uh, the, the dark uh, ground color, a lot of times I get a bit more coming through of that than I might like in a single uh, color pass, and so, um, especially what will happen is I light, lightly scrape them and then I'll go over with liquid, liquid and where the paint is extremely thin it actually will uh, almost wipe some paint away from certain areas and uh, it, it produces almost a crazing type effect and and ultimately I don't think that's such a bad thing uh, to have that revealed because um, over time the oil paint will become very thin in those areas anyway and I think it's just a byproduct of the the way I work but I've been trying to get the paint um, a bit thicker but uh, sometimes you can't you're just in fact a lot of what I do on these uh, textured boards is almost uh, in these early color passes is a bit of a almost a bit of a scrub in you know I have to kind of work it into those uh, textured areas so um, yeah, I, I, I think in some, uh, there's, there's one that I did, the one I did last week, I just hit with a bit of liquid, and it's holding up pretty good, but I could see some areas in the sky where I'm just going to need to go in and do some touch-up, if nothing else, but there's a few other little things I can do to it, and I'm going to keep it fresh, and uh, that's the thing uh, I always try and stress, is if you, well, in fact, I've told my student, I only have one full-time student right now, which is great because too many students, and uh, I get a bit, I get a bit exhausted. But um, I was telling her that you know, if you're not a master, one of the worst things you can do is sit there and try and tweak things. The best thing you can do is just to make an honest effort, do it in a timely manner. Don't overwork what you do and at least it'll be fresh and honest and you know when you gain a bit more experience you might be able to come in and very easily and quickly fix any any problems you perceive with that painting um, but trying to get all tweaky and overwork things when you're basically an amateur it's just a recipe for doing terrible paintings that's that's the fact of the matter and that actually goes for me as well um, as I stated, I think on last week's uh, videos, uh, I have been doing a few little figurative things, and that was one I did. I mean, I think it's saleable. I'm not going to destroy it, but it's overworked. I know I overworked it, and uh, it was very frustrating uh, while I was painting. It's like, wow, I lost that. I lost that. The thing is, like, every every stroke you, you put down on top of another stroke destroys what's underneath. You know, you, it's it's an additive process sometimes uh, there's always in fact not sometimes there's always a sweet spot where you should have stopped and you should have just left it alone and um, when uh, being an experienced uh, artist is that's one of the things that makes your work better really is knowing uh, when you're hitting that mark and uh, it's time to stop you know just let it be fresh if nothing else, it can be fresh and immediate and expressive. What happens uh, when you overwork things is that you choke all of the expressive qualities out of them. And uh, they become much more boring to look at. And uh, that's another thing I've talked about uh, quite a lot here on the uh, channel and on my um, blog. Uh, you know, you've got to... Uh, You gotta be willing to break, break some uh, eggs to make that cake. You've gotta be willing to do some bad paintings, and um, it's important if you're going to try and be a good artist. Uh, which I mean, the world really doesn't need any more bad ones. <laughs> Just saying, you know. Uh, you've gotta do a lot of work. That's all there is to it. And uh, I was talking to a friend of mine uh, recently who's uh, actually a writer, uh, not a painter, and he's very good, but um, he 
he's got a lot of things pulling on him. He's got a, a young family and things, and, uh, and a full-time job. And uh, I was like, well, you need to have a, um, you need to, to hunker down and have a regular practice. You know, you can't just uh, catch as catch can. You won't get your work done. And if you don't get your work done sooner or later, you'll regret it. You know, um, and that's all there is to it. Uh, there's no, there's no. You can make, in fact, you can make excuses at the end of the day. Or at the end of your life, uh, what do you want? You want to have a pile of excuses, or you want to have a body of work? You know, I think it's better to have a body of work. So, and I've lectured all of you uh, endlessly about this, but you need to hear it. Um, you just do. I mean, unless you are uh, one of the, the the few that actually have internalized this lesson and are working all the time. Uh, then you probably need to hear that you need to work more so work more uh, in fact stop the video go do a painting you can come back and watch the rest of the video when you're done with your painting how about that <laughs> no wait no watch another video yeah <laughs> anyway it should be fun too that's the other thing you know um, painting should be like eating sleeping breathing just be fun something you do just something it's a natural byproduct of what you do you know and um, then getting back into this sort of figurative stuff so you know when it comes to figurative art I've drawn a lot of figures and uh, I know anatomy very well I've drawn a lot of faces I know how to do faces well but I haven't painted a lot of faces especially if they're only say a half inch by three quarters of an inch in my brushes all my brushes are actually really huge, so uh, if I'm going to continue to do uh, any figure to stuff that has things like faces in it or any real details, um, I'll have to get in and uh, get some littler brushes to deal with things like, I don't know, eyes, lips, noses, things like that. Uh, anyway, well, that's a talk for another day. Uh, Thank you for joining me today uh, for uh, the 200th uh, painting uh, that I've shared on YouTube. Um, that is my own original creation. Um, new subscribers, thank you for subscribing to my channel. I really, really appreciate the, uh, the the sub. I think it's awesome. Be sure if you are uh, thinking of subscribing, click that little bell. Or if you subscribed and you haven't, click the little bell icon so you know when I actually post something up. And old subscribers, you guys rock. Thank you so much for sticking around. I'll be back real soon with another video. Meanwhile, please take good care and stay out of trouble. <laughs>